how cool would it be if you could reduce your alcohol consumption by doing a simple memory exercise before you start drinking? Now, you might not want to do that, but if you do, this study has something interesting, and I'm going to connect it to some other studies I'm aware of that make the use of your memory to change your behavior even more interesting. So this is done here uh, <laughs> in uh, December of 2024, which is, as I'm recording this now, in the future, if you can believe it or not. So it's a pre-published copy, but it's re recollecting a previous drinking episode reduces subsequent motivation for alcohol in females. And I don't know if this would reproduce for males or not. If memory serves, it's a fairly small uh, group of 50, I think we had. Uh, yes, so number equals 50 uh, is the amount of participants. But at the end of the day, what's so interesting about it is that they were basically asked to recall a previous drinking episode, and then it slowed the amount that they consumed in a session of consuming alcohol, which meant to less inebriation, less quickly, and then, I assume, less alcohol overall. So that's really interesting, and it bridges with something I've been aware of for a long time and I've talked a lot about on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast. By the way, this is Dr. Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com. If you're new here, get subscribed, hit that thumbs up if you like discussions about memory, memory science, the things that researchers are doing to help us explore how that we tick and how that we can get clues on how to operate better in the world using our memory. So what this makes me think of immediately is the Tim Dalglis research here, which what he had done, and this is just one study, but he had taken people with depression and in another study, I believe, uh, people with PTSD, and he used a memory palace, which is sometimes called method of loci, and he had people who were suffering with these problems, use a memory palace to visit happy memories distributed throughout a memory palace, and then they just felt better. And I've experienced that anecdotally myself. And when I read this research, the way that I was experiencing it just on, on my own, I, I refined it. I made it much, much better because I just created a memory palace with happy memories. So when I was feeling down, I could just travel through this memory palace and trigger happy memories all the time. In the case of this research, you know, there's not a memory palace involved as such, but just imagine how much stronger it might be if there were not just, you know, a memory palace filled with horrible drinking experiences, but also happy experiences where you may feel motivated to drink less simply because you're just so fulfilled with the way that your life is now. Uh, but back to this idea of using memory palaces to help mitigate or reduce symptoms of depression, you might want to check out this episode on my podcast called Surviving PTSD with the Help of Memory Techniques featuring Nicholas Castle. And Nick, very interesting guy, he was a police officer and he was able to basically do exactly what the Dalglish Leash Research says. He was able to suffer less from PTSD as a result of basically using memory palaces and applying them to memorize bushcraft uh, material, if I remember. And, you know, you just come on over to the site, click play, and you can listen to him describe it. There's a picture of him and a uh, really nice guy and very kind of him to share his time. And in fact, part of the character in Flyboy, Detective Williams, who is a detective who has PTSD, is directly inspired by Nicholas Castle. And what I did in this novel was to have a detective learn how to use memory techniques and it helped him deal less with PTSD symptoms that he had and defeat Flyboy. Or did he? <laughs> this is one of those moments. Flip through the pages. Ah, the butler did it. No, no, no. The butler did not do it. But anyway, <laughs> I'm working on the sequel to that book right now. Victorious. Uh, sorry, not Victorious. Mine, that's a different book of mine. Uh, it's called Vitamin X. I, I should try to just write endless books call that start with a V <laughs> to confuse myself. Um, and in fact, the, the final book of the series starts with the letter V also. In any case, um, back to this, uh, I highly recommend reading this. It's by Lorenzo Stafford as the head researcher, and that's what he looks like on his university website. And really interesting, psychobiological psychology. Fantastic. So uh, let me know if you think I should reach out to him and arrange an interview if you would be interested in that. It uh, looks fascinating. And one other scientific aspect of, of memory that comes to mind is something called prospective memory, 
which I've covered on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast before. And uh, you can listen to a podcast there, or you can watch on my main channel a video, which is uh, <laughs> the image here is clipped a little bit. But uh, that's uh, that's me and uh, holding a calendar. And the reason why I'm holding a calendar there is because prospective memory is memory of the future. So if we were to tie all this together, imagine if you did want to reduce alcohol consumption in your life, you had a prospective memory mental calendar where you know events are coming up like a birthday party or what have you, and it's on the 27th, let's say, of February. Well, using a prospective memory mnemonic calendar, you could have an image for February, let's say, because it's the second month you use a swan, and what did I say, the 27th? So I would use Nick Nolte myself for 27. He's always been my number for 27 for a long time. And you know, you could use St. Nick or whatever. I'm using something called the major system in order to derive these images, which is you can learn that in a, in a weekend quite easily. Um, and basically then when the date comes, you could have on your mnemonic calendar, like let's say here's the, the 27th of, of February, it'd be round about here. And you have this image of Nick Nolte and he is not drinking, right? Uh, or he's got the Alcoholics Anonymous book or whatever. And that would help you to remind yourself that you have a commitment to drink less or not, or, or drink not at all in the future. So that's a little thing to consider trying. And in order to bolster your results, you could draw upon the method of loci as a mnemonic device to access, uh, to facilitate access to self-affirming personal memories for individuals with depression, to give yourself a little bit of an ego boost so you feel stronger and more capable of standing up to the impulse to the behavioral change that you want. And although I didn't do those things, I have a bit of a personal story with this because many, many years ago, Jonathan Levy and I, when Jonathan was still doing Super Learner, we made a vow together, this was 2015, to stop drinking. We just thought, man, we're memory experts on the internet and uh, <laughs> we're getting sloshed here. We really shouldn't be doing that. Uh, and we didn't do any such thing as this as such, but we certainly talked about some of our bad memories that we had of just not being ourselves under the influence of alcohol, and both of us stopped. Uh, I had a few spills and chills after that, uh, one in particular, which you may have heard me tell that story when <laughs> I competed with Dave Farrow and I had a hangover because I'd been visiting friends in Canada and I hadn't been home to Canada for a long time and it was Thanksgiving and so uh, I finally broke down and, and drank some wine and then didn't stop drinking wine and then I got on a plane the next morning to Toronto and then I saw some friends and I did some more drinking with them and then the day after that I go to this memory competition Dave Farrell was not letting me out of there without competing. And because of a certain psoriatic arthritis, I was in really bad shape and also just in bad shape because I hadn't had any alcohol from August that year when Jonathan and I committed to quit. So from August to October, uh, because Canadian Thanksgiving was around that time, it must have been October. Well, I just got really hit hard by the alcohol drinking because I wasn't used to it anymore. In any case, Here's a funny thing. I wound up doing really quite well at that memory competition just thanks to mnemonics, thanks to very similar techniques for using a mnemonic calendar like I just talked about. The same thing applies to playing cards. In any case, playing cards is a different topic altogether. But if you're interested in that story, I interviewed Dave Farrow after that event happened and we talked about all of that sort of stuff and you could find that on the Magnetic Mary Method podcast. In any case, um, yeah, interesting science and I, I encourage you to, if you have access to the full article through your institution, as they say, give it a read. But the long and short of it is that they found that when people did this exercise, they wound up drinking much more slowly and as a result less. And I hope some of the other materials that I shared here will give you more ways to bolster that kind of effect if you want to reduce alcohol. And, you know, in the years since I've basically reduced myself, I, I just didn't drink for years and years and years. And I only started having a glass of wine every once in a while simply to to get the uh, reservatrol. 
And that's been a net positive, actually, uh, just as I age and so forth. But I've never gone into the kind of drinking that I ever did before. And I often do recall blackouts and all kinds of terrible things and just stupid things that, that happened. And it may be, as a, this research suggests, that that helps me <laughs> keep, keep on the path, so to speak. Um, I don't think I ever had a problem with alcohol as such, but I am sure glad to have it reduced to almost nothing. And if I ever wanted to go back to absolute dryness, I, I certainly could, I think, but I have had some benefit from uh, probably not just Reservatrol from having wine every once in a while, but also some of the positive bacteria that can really help with digestion. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there is no perfect world here uh, necessarily, but I thought you would find this very, very interesting. And who knew until I saw this that there's actually a journal of food quality and preference. And, uh, yeah, memory science is so fa fascinating. So hit that thumbs up if you enjoy this. Let me know if you'd like to see more scientific journalism like this or reporting on what's happening in science. I uh, sometimes read these science journalism pieces and I always first try to find the link because I often find that these pieces are not really re representing what the actual science says. And we've seen that on the podcast before when Dr. Reeser and Tyson Young Caporta both independently came on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast to explain better the Aboriginal memory technique research that they did because the popular journalists, they, they represented it in a way that wasn't exactly what the study suggested. And so we got to the bottom of it and it was fun. And uh, I'm not a scientist myself as such, I, I do have scientific literacy, I, I think. I mean, I got a PhD <laughs> for what that's worth. And uh, I like to just be you know, always not sure. I don't know that I am interpreting these things correctly. But I think if we don't actually read the studies, then we don't have a, we don't have a, a hope at all uh, because things are easy to misrepresent in popular language. So I hope I, I haven't uh, misrepresented anything here, but I would love to do more of this if you're interested. So again, there's uh, these uh, materials here on prospective memory and surviving PTSD. Nick Castle was so kind to share his story. It must have taken uh, a fair amount of courage to do that. And uh, oh, by the way, if you're wondering what this members is all about, that's where people who have the Magnetic Memory Method Masterclass go. And uh, thanks to everybody who supports this work with that. More to come very, very soon. All right. Thanks, everybody. Until we have a chance to speak again, hit that thumbs up as always. Get subscribed if you like this kind of content, and we will talk to you again. Keep yourself magnetic. Until then. Mm -hmm.